In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up your very own viral website, just like the one that you can see right now. I've decided to do it all around Labradors, but obviously you can decide to make a website on whatever subject you like. It's powered by WordPress, and I'm gonna show you how to do absolutely everything, starting with nothing and ending up with the website that you see before your very eyes. So let's get started. Hello, it's Alex here from WP Eagle. In this video, we're gonna be creating our very own viral website, much like Buzzfeed and those other viral websites that you've probably seen on the internet. Uh, it's powered by WordPress, and I'm gonna take you through setting up everything from the hosting, through to installing WordPress, getting a theme, adding content, and basically everything that you need to do to get your website up and running. This video is part of a playlist uh, all about viral stuff. So uh, not only will you find this video on how to create your viral website, but you'll also find a video on how to create your viral Facebook page, how to choose uh, the niche that you're gonna go into uh, for your viral website, as well as some other videos as and when I develop them and edit them and all that sort of stuff. Now, in terms of what you're gonna to need to be able to create this website, um, you are gonna to need to make a very small investment. The first thing you're gonna need is a domain name, if you haven't got one registered already. So you can uh, register that one when we set up the website if you like, or you can go and purchase that from a domain registrar like GoDaddy. The next thing you're gonna need is some hosting, and I've got a voucher code that I'm gonna uh, give to you as we get started. Uh, my recommended host is HostGator, and as I say, with my voucher code, you can get your first month hosting for just one penny, so that's uh, kind of a low risk investment. The next thing you're gonna need on top of your hosting, and in fact, the final thing you're gonna need is your theme, and the cost for the theme is just $49. It's a premium WordPress theme, and for that money, you get a quality theme, which works really well, but you also get support and updates, which is really handy, uh, you know, as and when things go wrong, or new features come out. So yeah, highly recommended. Uh, I don't use free themes because uh, I generally find they're more trouble than they're actually worth. The links and coupon codes that I provide in my videos, they are affiliate uh, ones, which means I get a small commission if you use them. So uh, thanks very much for that in advance. And if you get any questions or comments or you get stuck at any point uh, while you're making your website, then please do get in touch, leave them in the comments below or send me an email or get in touch on Twitter, uh, whatever you like. Uh, but I think that's enough chit chat for me. Let's get started on making our viral website. Let's go. Okay, so let's get our hosting set up uh, for our website. So I'm over at hostgator.com. These are my chosen uh, hosting company, uh, one that I like to recommend. The reason for that is uh, they've got some really great pricing. Um, as you can see, price is starting at some very low figures, three ninety five a month for that one. And I have actually got a voucher code, which I'm gonna to give to you as we sign up, which will get you your first month's hosting for just a penny. So you can kind of dip your toe in the water without having to spend too much money, which is great. But not only is their pricing really good, uh, their service is really good too. Um, I found that all the websites that I've hosted with them and all of the, the uh, websites that you see within my videos, if I mention HostGator, then they are actually on HostGator, so you can see for yourself the speed, etc. And I find them really fast um, and yeah, really reliable, not had any downtime or anything like that. I found that if I needed any help, they've always been really helpful. They've got a live chat system, which you get when you sign up so that you can um, very easily uh, get in touch and they'll answer any of your questions and whatnot. Uh, not that you often have any problems, to be fair. Uh, generally, it's all straightforward and you can kind of look after yourself without having to speak to anyone. But yeah, uh, be sure to have a look around their website. Um, they are really good in terms of uh, their guarantees. I say they've got great support via live chat, which is on 24 7 365. They've got a 45 day guarantee, so you can try stuff without any risk. If you don't like it, just cancel it, get your money back. Uh, so I've got a voucher for just a penny, so you don't really need to worry too much about that. And the uptime's good, so yeah, you don't have to worry about your site going down. Um, check them out, there's loads of great stuff. They've won awards, great reviews, and really good. I will just disclaim that um, I do earn a small commission uh, if you use my voucher code, um, but hey, that's a great way of just saying thank you for the, the videos that I'm creating, and yeah, it's a win-win it's a for everyone. You don't have to use it, uh, it's entirely up to you, but so you will get a discount, and it's a great way of saying thank you, uh, and you're showing your appreciation for my videos. But anyway, that's enough of me talking about this. Let's get started and get our website set up. So these ways, just to click this big yellow button, the Get Started Now button. And then if we scroll down, we can see the different plans. Now, generally, if this is your first website and you just want to kind of dip your toe in water, you don't want to uh, go in too deep, then the hatchling plan will probably be great for you. You can just have the one website on that. 
and and off you go. If you're thinking that maybe this is going to be the start of something bigger and you're going to have more than one website, then the other two packages, the baby or the business plan, may be more suitable. Uh, but keep in mind, you obviously can move around plans um, once you've signed up anyway. So um, let's just click on this one for now, the hatchling plan. Okay, so the first section is to do with our domain name. And if you have already registered your domain name, you click on this tab here and you type in the domain name um, that you've got. If you don't already have a domain name, uh, that's fine too. We just go back over to register a new, do new domain name and you can just start typing it in here. So migrate viral website, whatever. And then as you start to type uh, and select the extension, what will happen is that um, host case will go off and do a search and see what's available. And you can see for that one, my great viral website, they're all available and you, you can then tick whichever ones you want, the .com, .club, .co, .space, .whatever you like. Now I've already got my domain name, so I'm not gonna register one right now, I've got one. So I'll go over to, I already own this domain name and I can type in the domain name that I've got, which is called labradorfeed.com. There we go, then it's gonna say, uh, you know, if I wanna buy any more domain names, which I don't right now, I'm happy with my Labrador feed. So then if we scroll down, we can choose our plan and the billing cycle, again, depending on what you're up to, um, is gonna determine how long you wanna commit. You may just wanna go for one month um, or three months. You get a discount if you go for the 12 months, 24 months or 36 months. So again, it's really, uh, how long, how deep are you gonna go in on this? If you really think you're gonna go for it, then yeah register for a year and get your discount and uh, you're kind of committed that you're gonna make it work then. But if you're not too sure, let's go for the one month. In here you need to enter your username and a security pin is gonna be used obviously to log in. I'm not gonna fill in all this form right now because uh, that's a bit boring, I'll do it in a second. Again, bit of form to fill in or your email, your name, company and all that kind of stuff if you have one. And obviously your payment details. Now if we scroll down a little bit further, section four, it's all about additional services and to be honest I don't think you really need any of these let's just untick them get the price down here is the coupon code which I mentioned I'd remove whichever code is in there at the moment and I say I'd really appreciate if you use my code uh, which is Eagle Penny which I'll put on the screen and if you click validate you'll see that that goes down to just a penny to pay today for um, for our first months of hosting so uh, that's really great. You then just tick the final box that you've read the terms and conditions, which I'm sure you have, and click check out now. So what I'll do is I will go and create my account now, fill in this form, and uh, I'll see you in a second, and we'll get WordPress installed and start setting up our website. See you in a sec. Okay, so that went through fine. I've done me payment details and all that kind of stuff. And I've just checked my email account, and I've got my email here with uh, all my information on, which is great. So now we're ready to log in and install WordPress and basically start putting our website together. So you've got a few links here and passwords, which obviously you're gonna to need to keep safe. Uh, you've got one for your billing and then you've got one for your control panel. It's the control panel where we need to go first. So if I click on here, then go back and just copy and paste. That username is there. Make sure that you don't copy any spaces if you are copying and pasting. There we go. And then Password is that one there. Then we're all logged in. You can just close all these things, which are a bit annoying. And in here you'll see you've got all sorts of stuff that you can play around with in terms of getting your website up and running. Okay, down here is your account information, which is very useful. Now, what we need to do, um, and this only applies to people that have already registered a domain name, which could be quite a few of you. If you've just registered one with HostGator, you can just skip this step. It's only gonna take a, a minute or two. If you've already registered a domain, maybe over with GoDaddy or someone else, then you do need to follow this step, step because we need to update your name server. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna go over to GoDaddy, who are my um, domain registrar. Sign in. Oh, I'm already signed in. Go to manage my domains. Obviously, if you're not with GoDaddy, don't worry, it's pretty much the same process with anyone. Um, you need to find basically a domain that you want to use and then you just need to update the name servers to match the ones that are listed in here under your account information. So if I could just, I've got quite a few domain names as you can see, let's see if I can find it. There it is. Uh, 
And then if we go here, you see that name servers are set to uh, these ones, which are the GoDaddy ones. So I'm just going to click Manage. I'm going to select Custom, and then I'm going to select Enter Custom Name Servers. I'm just going to copy and paste them from over here. There we go. And then click Save. That's going to take a few moments to go through, but I think that's all done. Okay, so let's go back to our host gator and just scroll up to the top. Uh, first thing we're going to do is get WordPress installed because uh, obviously the domain, sorry, the website is powered by WordPress. So yeah, be a good place to start. So there's a nice little link here that says get started with WordPress today. Let's follow that. It takes you over to this quick install section. And here we go. Install WordPress for free. Let's click install WordPress. And we just got a little form to fill in. We need to select the domain name, which is obviously labradorfeed.com for me, but obviously be whatever domain name you've got. In here, you need to type in your email address. You can give the site a title. Again, all this stuff can be changed later. I need to spell Labrador better. I'm going to be typing it a lot. You can give the admin username which is what you're going to be using to log in to WordPress. It's going to create your password and you put your name in and then click install. Okay, we can click no thanks, I'm a web designer on this one. And then it's done. You see across the top here, we've got this orange bar. So now we can uh, click on this little arrow and view our credentials. And if we click on this link here, it should take us over to our admin area. Now, this may or may not work. We'll see in a second because there can be a delay if you just registered domain name or if you just updated the name servers as I have. And if this doesn't work, don't panic. It probably just means you need to wait a little while. But hey, let's click it and see what happens. What I'm going to do actually is I'm just going to copy this password to my clipboard so that um, I've got it ready to go. So let's click on this link. And the website isn't there. So it probably means that I just need to wait a second um, because, yeah, the um, whatever, the DNS hasn't updated. So let's just wait a minute and I'll do a quick edit and we'll come back in a sec. Okay, so I had to wait about two or three minutes and then I just refreshed that page that I was on, the login page, and hey, it's here. That's great. So now I can log in with that username and the password that's in my clipboard um, from up here. Uh, click remember me, why not? Hey, my password is incorrect. Let's go back and just copy that again. Hmm, it did look a bit long, actually. Is that going to let me in? Yeah, we're in. Now, that password is a bit long and a bit difficult to remember, so let's just quickly update that. So you can update your password. If you go into All Users and click Edit, if I scroll down, I can get a new password here. I'm just going to type in one that I can remember. There we go. So there's a load of things you can just close again, banners everywhere. Let's just close all that. And if we go back and click visit site, we can see that we've got just basically the basic WordPress installed and it's ready for us to start adding our feed and, and everything else that we're gonna do. So um, hopefully you got this far and uh, well, let's carry on and let's get our premium theme installed and ready to go. Okay, so over at Theme Forest, uh, which is where we're going to purchase our premium theme from, uh, the theme is just $49, which is great value. You get support for that as well, so you can uh, ask the author uh, any questions if you happen to get stuck, which hopefully you won't. Obviously, you can also ask me as well. I'll be happy to help you. Um, but it's always good to have access to the developer. It also means you get updates, all that sort of stuff. Now, a lot of people say, oh, why don't you recommend some free themes? And basically, because free themes in my experience, just aren't that good. And you don't get the support, you don't get the updates, and generally it's just a bit of a nightmare. So it's always worth, I think, especially if you're gonna be building basically a business, uh, which is what we're doing today with all our viral stuff, um, then you need to invest a little bit. And you know, $49 is not a huge amount of money in the grand scheme of things. Uh, you know, beg, steal, or borrow it, and off you go. I'm gonna put a link up, and that is an affiliate link. Um, again, I appreciate it if you use it. Um, that's really great. If you don't want to, that's fine. Just go to themeforest.net and do a search for Bimba, which is a great name. 
So I'm just going to show you what the site looks like on the live preview. Let's close that bar. So yeah, real nice, clean looking site. It looks a little bit like BuzzFeed or any of those other type viral sites that we see. Um, it's got some great places for widgets, so we can put our Facebook over here. Look, uh, it's got a nice opt-in email um, thing that we'll be setting up, uh, hooking up with Mailchimp so that we can collect some email addresses, and then we've got a, a great email list then of people that love whatever our niche is about. Obviously, for me, it would be Labrador dogs. Um, there's places for ads. Again, we'll be adding some ads using AdSense or um, or some other ad thing. Probably AdSense, I'd have thought. To start with, and we can place these here and over here. Um, in fact, you can place them wherever you like. If we click through to a post, you can see that it's got the nice kind of share buttons going on with a big counter. Share buttons on the images. Again, another space for an ad. Um, Lots of great GIFs control there, and you can add videos, embeds, all sorts of things. Basically got everything we need. Got a nice little author blurb. And here, we've got some uh, kind of, you may also like, which takes you to other posts on the site. Now as we go forward, um, I'm probably gonna be adding another content delivery type thing here. Uh, I can't do it straight away because I think you need a certain number of page views in order to be able to apply to that. But hopefully if all goes well, check out our future video where we'll add uh, kind of a content delivery network in this section so that we're pulling in content from other people's uh, websites on the internet and basically getting paid then uh, for any clicks that we send through. But that will come later. I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit. But yeah, this is the theme we're going to be using. Uh, it's called Bimba. And uh, I'm going to go back to the theme for us now and I'm going to buy it. So if you don't have a theme for us account, you will need to set one up and um, put some kind of funds in. I've already got a balance, so that's fine. I'm just going to check out with my credit. You can pay with PayPal, as you can see. But it's often best um, to kind of just charge up your account. You can use it across a number of different things. So you can use it across Photo Dune, Graphic River, Code Canyon. So it might be worth just putting, you know, $60, $70, whatever you can afford to put in so that you can use it in the future. Um, I may be recommending some other products uh, going forward, um, plugins, etc., that we can use. So yeah, it's always worth just having a few dollars in your account so that you're ready to go. And um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say on that. So yeah, I've ordered that. I can now download it. Let's um, put it in my folder. Okay, I'm just gonna show that on my computer. There's a zip file. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna extract that folder that I just downloaded. It creates another little folder. And in here we've got all the bits and bobs that we need. It's got the documentation and um, the theme and, and everything like that. So. That's great, just need to extract it. Let's go back to our website. Uh, we can probably close Theme Forest down now and that one down. Here's a website, obviously I'm already logged in. So I'm gonna go back to the dashboard and then I'm gonna go to Appearance and Themes. And then I'm gonna click Add New. And then I'm gonna find that folder that I just, um, well, uh, I clicked upload. Let me just show you again. Sorry, I went a bit too quick. Click add new. And then there's an upload at the top there, you see. And then I'm gonna find that folder that I've got on my computer. Here it is, the WP final pack. And then the first one I'm gonna upload is called bimba.zip. So let's just click open, click install now. That's just gonna take a second or two to upload. There we go, that was installed successfully. I'm not gonna activate it just yet. I'm gonna go back to the themes page because what I wanna do is add the child theme. Now a child theme, I'm not gonna bore you too much with the details, but basically going forward, if we need to make any um, substantial changes to the theme for whatever reason, it's always good to have a child theme. That way, uh, any changes that you do make, they're not lost when you happen to update the theme. So just trust me on this, it's a good idea to install and activate the child theme. So. That's done, it's all happy, let's click activate. And yeah, you saw I, you could find the child theme again in that folder that we extracted. So now it's gonna ask us to install some uh, plugins. And if we like, we can import some dummy data, which will basically give us some ideas of layout and stuff like that, so that's probably a good idea too. So let's just do all this, let's click proceed. It's gonna take a few seconds.
Okay, that's all done. There's a little message up here that says, um, do you want to share some stuff? It's up to you. I'm just going to click allow. That's fine. I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. If you get a 10% discount, if you need anything in the future, so yeah, must be good. Okay, so let's just go back and have a look at what that's done to our website. Oh, it looks like the demo, which is good. So it's a great way of giving you an idea of, of content and layout. And obviously we'll delete all this stuff in a bit um, once we've set up uh, what we want to do. So there's just another bit of housekeeping that I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to go into plugins. There was a few plugins that were installed um, by kind of HostGator uh, when we set up the WordPress, which I don't think we're going to need. And they just kind of get in the way. So there's a few that we don't need. So hello, Dolly, we don't need. Uh, we're going to need to deactivate them first, actually. So we don't need this Mojo Marketplace. Let's deactivate that. Let's deactivate Ninja Forms. Don't ask me things. <laughs> Just deactivate. There we go. And I think that's it for now. Um, in terms of clean up, let's uh, let's just tick these then. I don't want Hello Dolly, I don't want the jetpack for now. Don't want that, I don't want that. Then I'm just gonna go down the bottom and click delete. Just a little tip on that. I think it's always a good idea to keep your WordPress as clean as you can. You don't want unnecessary plugins and software slowing things down, so um, that's why I've cleaned that out. Um, what is this forms uh, that's here? Okay, so those storms are by uh, Formidable. Again, a plugin that I, not too sure we're going to need right now, so I'm just going to deactivate and delete it. If we need a form plugin later, I've got some great ones that I would recommend. Um, and yeah, we'll come back to that later. So we're all clean, we're ready to go. Um, the site is looking like the demo, and we need to start making it our own. So um, the first thing to do would be to add our logo and add some colors, and then we can start looking at this content and cleaning it out and um, linking up our Facebook page and, and all the rest of it. So um, you're doing well so far. Yeah, you're doing really great. So uh, if you get stuck at any point, remember you can always leave a question or comment below. Uh, but for now, go and grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee and we'll crack on making this website look like our own. Okay, so the first thing you're probably gonna wanna do in terms of making the website look your own and have your own style and look and feel as it were, is to add a logo. Now I've just knocked up a logo here very quickly for our new website, or the one I'm making right now, the Labrador feed. And basically I've just made it in my graphics package. I use Fireworks, but Photoshop or, um, I don't know, there's loads of good free graphic packages out there. Uh, I've also got a video actually on my site about how to make a logo for free, so you might wanna check that out. Um, but what I've done in this particular case is I wanted a little graphic and I'm not very good at drawing or anything like that. So what I did is I went on over to um, Graphic River. Again, I'll put a link up on for that. Uh, affiliate link, thanks very much. And yeah, I found this for six dollars. Uh, it's got some little dog uh, graphics. So I purchased that and yeah, cut the Labrador out, dropped it into my graphics package, and then just added a bit of text. And yeah, well, it's not amazing, but hey, it'll do. So what we need to do is obviously go back to our website and um, basically start adding it. So um, to do that, we go up here. I'm obviously still logged in. I'm going to go to customize and then go to site identity. And here and here we can change bits. Probably we might as well change this tagline while we're here. Whatever you like, really. Okay, that doesn't really show up anyway, so you don't need to worry too much. Uh, here we can add an icon. Uh, I might do that a bit later. I don't have one to hand right now. Uh, but here's the logo. And then if we go upload file, and then you find your logo on your computer. That one looks like it's got a white background, which, oh no, it hasn't, it's fine. Okay, and just make a note of the dimensions, which are over here, 390 by 666. Uh, which are actually already in because I did a little test earlier before I started recording. Um, here we put in our high res logo. So that basically is the same logo, but uh, twice the resolution. So I'm gonna go in here and I've got this one here. So yeah, that's basically double the size 380 by 132. 
and it looks really sharp if you've got a nice retina screen like I have. The footer stamp we won't worry about right now. That's basically this thing down the bottom where you can have a little thing that people may click on. I mean, whoever gets down to the bottom, but hey, we can have some fun with that later. So let's just click save and publish. Now, as you can see, it's sitting a little bit high because it's not a particularly uh, big fat logo like they had on the demo. So I probably want to move it down a little bit. And we can do that if we go into design. So I just went back there and then into design and then into header. We've got this margin here and we can change that. There we go. And now that's looking a little bit more in line. Um, let's see if it needs any more. Let's go up to 30. That might be too much. No, I think 25 was good. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, in here we've also got um, the colors. Now, I want the colors to match my logo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open a quick note. I've got my notes app here. And what I'm gonna do oh, is go into my graphics package. I'm just gonna pick these colors here that I'm using so that I can carry them across the site. So I'm using a dripper tool. Again, most graphic packages have this. Um, basically, want the hex code for the colors you're using. So the brown there, obviously I've gone for brown and yellow because that's the color of Labradors generally. So I want to make a note of these because I'm probably going to be needing them quite a bit. And then I want this yellow color. This is your orangey yellow, which is that one. And there we go. So yeah, just make a note of them. Okay, and then let's go back to um, our website and we can start changing some of the colors. So if we change this, let's change this to the yellow color, which I've probably already got in my clipboard. Oh, uh, that's not right. Did I, uh, I got a bit of space at the beginning there, you see? Oops, oh, and now I've forgotten the free. There we go. Okay, so that's changing the uh, kind of highlighted uh, bit of that menu, which is great. Looking good. Okay, and then we've got the nav bar background. Now I'm thinking maybe where it should be the yellow. Let's see what looks like the yellow, but maybe the brown might be better. But let's have a look. Yeah, the yellow is okay. Let's have a look with the brown. Again, when building your website, uh, just keep trying around until you get it looking nice. Yeah, I think the brown is better. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll make the accent the yellow and let's see what that looks like. Obviously you can always change these if you get bored or change your mind later. There we go. I think that looks all right for now. It's getting kind of Labrador colors. Obviously, I mean, it's gonna be made up of lovely content with lots of great pictures, which is gonna draw people's eyes. Um, hopefully. So uh, yeah, they hopefully won't be looking at the header and that too much. So let's just have a look. There's a few more things here. So that's the navbar sub menu if you've got any drop downs. So that's that bit. So it's white and then it's got the red. So I think I'll just change this to the yellow again. So that when you get hover, they're nice and yellow. That's looking good. Save and publish. And that's saved, so we can close this now. And here's our website, it's looking good. So I think what we need to do now is um, have a look at some of the other colors and get all those set, because I can see there's still some red bits. So let's go back into Customize. And go into Design and go to Global. Okay, so in here we can set our layouts and whether you want a stretch layout or a box, let's have a look at the difference. Mm, might not be able to see because of this menu, let's collapse it. Okay, so it's just kind of added a bit of gray to the sides. If we go back to the stretched, it goes all the way across. Hmm. It's whatever you like, really. I quite like the boxed, if I'm honest. So let's maybe go for that. Yeah, why not? Very nice. Um, you can obviously select your, I like this gray the best. F5, 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 I like it so much. I remember the color code. Just a nice light gray. 
Okay, so let's keep going. Um, here's all the basic color schemes. So at the moment, it's kind of black, um, which I think is good for text. I mean, because there's going to be a lot of text going on. You might want to add loads and loads of colors, but uh, you know, you don't want to overdo it too much. Make a dog's dinner of it, as it were. Excuse the dog pun. You don't come here for the jokes, I guess. <laughs> but hey, yeah, let's make the accents yellow so the hover kind of matches. So that's nice. And then this one is for the badges and stuff. So let's change that to that. There we go. I don't know what that one is, that red one, but hey-ho. That's all looking good. Let's save and publish. And I'll close that and we'll have a look at the site in all its glory. Yeah, the color scheme is all matching up. So. What I think we need to do now is add a bit of our own content to really kind of make the site our own um, and probably delete some of this um, demo content that I imported because you're not really going to need it. But uh, it's a good way to give you an idea of, of stuff. So I think, yeah, what we need to do is clean out and uh, clean out all this demo content, set up our own categories, and then I'll start adding some content. Now, in terms of adding content, what I'm going to do in this video is add it manually. You know, I'm just going to look for some stuff and, and post it in the usual kind of fashion. Uh, in another video, which you'll find in this playlist, um, I use a tool to kind of automate the content a bit more. So searching out content on the web and then uh, scheduling it uh, to be posted both to Facebook and to the site. So uh, yeah, you want to definitely check that out. But I think before you do that, you want to add a bit of content manually just so you know how everything works. Uh, and you're probably going to want to do that as well as doing the automated stuff to really add some value. Okay, so let's go back in and see the demo stuff and get rid of it. Now, I don't think importing the demo stuff was a bad idea because it also brought over some settings and some layout and the homepage and all that stuff, which is, is all very useful. So, but we don't need all this. Um, so let's just go and select all of them like that and then go down to move to trash and click apply. That's 20 gone. Let's do these ones as well. So we've got no posts. Let's go back to the categories and see what we've got. We've got animals, funny, and wow, and WTF, which are all good categories. We probably don't need animals. But funny, wow, WTF, they sound good. I don't know why they got bim, but let's change that. So that's the slug. That's the address we just want. Funny. That's good. Oh, there is a quick edit here, which makes it a bit easier. I just want to get rid of that bimba. And quick edit on that. Then I'm going to add a couple of other ones. Um, oh, sorry about the notifications. I thought they were turned off. They are. Hmm, how annoying. Sorry about that. Anyway, so let's add a few more categories. I'm going to add a, um, we've got funny, well, let's have a cute. Um, and I guess I'm going to probably come up with some more as I add content. So uh, what else could we have? Cute, funny, well. Hey, I don't know. This will do for now. I'll, I'll think of some as I come across uh, content. We could have a videos one. Let's have that. Um, and a photos one. Why not? And obviously posts and whatever can be in more than one category. So you could have something in the funny and in the photos, um, which is all good. Uh, we don't need that some kind of category description thing. But obviously you would probably want to add some descriptions to your categories uh, as you start to add stuff because it may appear on the site, um, which is good for SEO. Okay, so we've got our categories. Uh, let's go back to the site. There shouldn't be anything there now, uh, which there isn't. So we need to go and add some content. So um, I'll add a couple on, on this video and then I'll go off and add some more uh, behind the scenes because you know I don't want to fill the video of just me adding content that I'm searching for on the web. But I think the first place I'm going to look is YouTube and look for some funny uh, Labrador videos. So there's quite a few like compilations um, what not. So here, let's go for this one. The 10 funny oops Yeah, this looks great. So um, I'm going to just take that link, go back to the website and go to new post. 
and let's give it a name. In one. You can add a subtitle. Chocolate Labra Labrador videos. Okay, I can't spell. Down the right here, I'm gonna pick um, video. And then in here, I'm just gonna paste that link. And, oh, there's the video. So let's just um, put it into its category, which would be funny and videos. And click publish. And if we go and view the post. There we go. And if click play, it plays fine. Okay, I think this video does need a little bit of text too, so you can easily add text by going in and just adding some like this. Chocolate Labs being funny. Okay, if you wanna add a featured image, uh, obviously you need one. Uh, let me just go and find one on Google. Just gonna do a quick image search and find something. That's the good one. Funny lab. I'm gonna go back to the post and go set featured image and upload that. Oh, hang on, I just saved the wrong thing. I need to view the image. There we go. I saved the HTML file accidentally. Funny lab. Let's click update. So if we go back to the home page. There's our video. And you go through and it's there. So um, what I'll do is I'll add some more content and uh, then we've got some more things to play with and I can show you um, what we can do with them in terms of laying them out and all that sort of stuff. Um, okay, so I'll do a quick edit and uh, when we come back, there'll be some more content to look at. Okay, so uh, I've added a load of content, as you can see. Um, yeah, I've just been looking around on the web, finding bits and bobs on YouTube, on Pinterest, and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, it's filled out quite nicely. Um, I've created some categories. So what I'm gonna do now is add these categories across the top here so they match up properly. So to do that, we need to go into uh, menus. Um, let me just get rid of that message, that's annoying. There we go. Okay, so the menu we wanna change is the primary menu right now. So I'm just gonna remove this features because that came in from the demo content. Let's just get rid of all these things. And this, the contact does, yeah, we can leave that. So let's put that now. So the categories I've got are here. So let's just add all those. What I'll do is I'll just get rid of these actually so that we don't get confused. I think they're the same thing, but hey, just in case. Click add to menu. Then we can just put these in the order that we like. There we go, let's click save menu. And visit the site. So yeah, there we go. So then if we click on any of these, we go into the various categories that we've got. So uh, that's the cute one. Perfect. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is set this area up here, which is, um, again, just done by either setting it as a category or as a tag. We'll do that in Customize. So uh, then we go to Featured Entries. And here we can either choose to say a category or you can tag posts up and use a tag. So I'm gonna go for just the category for now, just uh, let's say the photos will be fine. Um, make sure your tag is not, I think you can either have one or other. So 
if you've gone for category you need to make sure your tag is none there they are let's have a look at that save and publish they're looking good now this bit here I believe is a widget so if we go into appearance and widgets and home we've got our picks and again we can choose um, what we like so let's see if we've got a tag well I think we probably need to create a tag actually so let's before we do that let's go back into posts and I'll just tag up a few posts so let's go to tag sorry blimey keep up and I'm going to create a our pick tag like that and then I'm going to go to posts and just select a few of these so um, that one that one that one that one and that one we just turn off my notifications. Sorry about that. Okay, so yeah, I've selected all those and I can go back up to the top and go to edit, then apply, and then uh, type in the tag our pick. There we go, it's found it, so that's fine. Click update. So now when we go into um, widgets and go to home, our picks we can now go down and find the tag our pick and then well let's just leave that as it is and just see what it looks like that's saved I'm just gonna open the site in a new tab there we go it's obviously set to um, just free at the moment which is fine I think for now okay so we've got a few other bits and bobs we need to change um, let's set the Facebook up. So um, again, that's a widget. It's just here. Now my, I don't know what my Facebook page URL is, so let's just head on over to Facebook. And obviously be sure to check out the Facebook video, which is part of this uh, playlist on how to set up your Facebook page and get some likes and all that kind of stuff. So that's uh, my Facebook page URL. I'm just gonna copy that paste it into here click save let's refresh the home page there we go looking good okay so this next element here is our um, kind of email sign up which I believe works with MailChimp so I'll put a link up on the screen for that and obviously down in the description it is an affiliate link thank you very much if you use it MailChimp is highly recommended I use it all the time I think the first package is free anyway, so um, yeah, go and check it out if you haven't already. It's a great way of managing your email list and sending out emails. So let me just log in. Uh, if I can remember my username, we'll be all right. Okay, so I'm logged in. Let's go back and have a look here. Okay, so we need to set up our form settings, which I guess is over here, which will be in the theme settings. Oh no, it's in this MailChimp for WP plugin. Okay, so it's just a basic email form, that's fine. Let's go to settings. Okay, I'm in the wrong place. I need to go over to here to MailChimp, I believe. Okay, yeah, here we go. So it says it's not connected, we need the API key. So let's go back to MailChimp. And it's in account, integrations. No, it's not in extras, sorry. Blimey, I hope you're still with me, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so here we go, is the API key. I'm just gonna copy that into my clipboard and paste it in here and click save changes okay so that's connected and if we scroll down um, it shows the lists here now I obviously need to create a new list for this website so I'm going to go back to MailChimp and go to lists and go create list give it a name Obviously having an email list is a great way uh, of um, 
sharing affiliate links. Um, you know, you can build uh, a list nicely using your website and then send out, uh, you know, some fun stuff as well as maybe some product links to Amazon or whatever else you can think of. Obviously, depends on uh, which niche you're in. But yeah, it's a, always a good idea to build up a list. Um, as they say, the money's in the list. Okay, so I'm just going to put an email address in here, labradorfeed.com. You joined via labradorfeed.com. So you just have to fill in all these little form, uh, this little form here, and then we're done. Let's click save. Okay, so that list is set up. So now if we go back to our website and refresh this MailChimp page, Oh, well, let's even click this button here, Renew MailChimp Chimp Lists. There we go. Then I can select that, make sure the fields map up. So yeah, that's all fine. And that's all good. So if we go back to our form and go to settings, we can then tick Labrador Feed and click Save Changes. So that should all work now. If we go back to the website, I'm just gonna refresh the page. You type my email address in here. Click sign up. That seems to have worked fine. Okay, so the next thing we might wanna change is this heading here, um, which you can do again in customize. And then if we go to newsletter, it's all here, so uh, get the best. I'll just change that to Labrador stuff. And I'll put that in, Ooh, copy that and put that in there too. So that's all done. And um, there's one other message that you might wanna change, which is this little copyright down the bottom. Again, we can do that in here. So that's under site identity, and then scroll down, copyright WP Eagle. Don't want that. Save and publish. Okay, so it's starting to come together nicely now. So um, the next thing is to have a look at the uh, the footer here. So we can just change this disclaimer and whatnot. So these are all widgets. Um, so we can do that if we just come out of here, go to widgets, and they are the footer widgets. So we've got this text disclaimer. We'll change that to about us. You can put some text in here. Find all the best Labrador virals on the internet. Sign up to our newsletter to get exclusive Labrador offers. I don't know, something like that. You can build a site like this by watching WP Eagle on YouTube. Then I can add a little link. If you want to add a link, you need to actually type in the kind of code. It's a href equals, and then you put the website in, and then a little speech mark and a bracket thing. And then finish with a one of them, a slash A brackety thingy. Good. So that's done. Oh, if I type newsletter in right, it'll be fine. Let's save again. So the social media icons are here. Now to set the um, links on those, you need to come to a plugin which is under settings and G1 socials. And in here, you can kind of add all the stuff. Now I've only got a Facebook at the moment. Um, so I'm just going to remove all these until I set them up. Obviously, you can set up whichever social media profiles you like. I have got the Facebook, so I will copy that one in. Click Save. And if we go back and have a look at the site, that's linking off for them. They're still filled in, so that's why they're appearing. But yeah, I'll set those up later. Uh, obviously, it's quite straightforward. Just go to each one and create your own profile and then copy the link into that settings area I just showed you there in G1 Social. Okay, so here is our recent comments. That will start obviously to fill out once we get a few comments. Um, but what we really need to do now is obviously set 
the ads up, um, which is very important if we're gonna make any money out of this website. So I'm gonna use Google AdSense for that. So um, let me just close a few of these tabs and I'm gonna head on over to AdSense. I'm just gonna type it into there, Google it. I'm already signed up. You'll obviously need to click here, sign up yourself. Let me just sign in. Then in here, I'm gonna click create new ad unit. Now I suggest that we create um, about four different ad uh, units because there's quite a few different adverts places on the theme and you've got plenty to play with. So let's just call this one Labrador feed one. I'm just gonna keep it responsive for now because I don't know exact sizes, but I think that should be fine because I think it will hopefully then just fit um, to the B, you know, the right size automatically. So let's, I'm just gonna set it to display ads as well because I don't really like the text ads to be fair. So this is the first bit of code. Let's copy that. Go back to the uh, website. Go to WP Quads, which is the advertising uh, plugin. Go to AdSense code, and then paste in here. Let's go back and click close. Let's create a new ad unit, Labrador V2. Again, display ad. Dun, dun, dun get the code and I think you get the idea let me do one more now you do have to wait a little while for these ads to start working I think Google have to approve them or whatever so if they don't show up straight away don't panic okay so let's paste that last code in there I'm gonna do one more for luck And paste that in there. Let's click Save Changes. Okay, and then we need to set the ads we're gonna use. The random ads sometimes works, doesn't always work. So it's best sometimes to just, you know, select some of your ads a bit like this one. Okay, and then we can tick these visibility, post pages, categories, homepage, archives, tags, all that sort of stuff. Okay, that's all done. So if we go back and refresh, there is now a white space there. So um, basically we just gotta wait for Google now to uh, approve our ads and they should start appearing. Um, so we'll just wait for that to happen. While we're waiting, we can uh, tweak a few more settings. So down the bottom here, there's this broken image. Basically, we can have there is a little kind of pop-up thing if you want it. So um, don't know if you do. Let's turn that off. I don't. And what else have we got left to do? Uh, I think that's about it. There's obviously another white space appeared here, actually, which is, again, where an ad unit's going to be. Um, these pages are automatically generated, so that's, that's all happening. Uh, for the Contact Us page... Uh, we just need to add a form. Um, so contact form seven is the recommended plugin. So uh, let's go with that. So in order to do that, we're gonna go into uh, the dashboard, go to plugins, add new, do a search for contact form seven. Then click install now. That's all installed. And then if we go into contact to contact forms, we've got this one here, ID 512. Uh, I've just got to remember that number. And it's just a simple your name, your email, your subject, your message, which is fine by me. Obviously, if you want to change it, you can do it in here. You can add all these different fields. You can just click like that, for example, to add a text field, you give it a name, etc., etc. It's pretty straightforward. Let's just click save and remember that 512. If we go back to uh, the website and go to contact us. Oh, it's already appeared. Perfect. Nothing else to be done. I'm going to uh, just change that text there. Put. Uh, got something a Labrador to share, use the form below. Uh, 
And if we visit the site, that's looking good. So let's just wait for those ads to uh, appear so we can see how it looks. And if there's any kind of final t touches that we need to do. Oh yeah, we're gonna turn off that image thing. Let's do that, go to customize. And it's under, where's it under? Site identity, I believe. Here it is, let's just remove that URL. That should get rid of it. Yeah, it's not very strange. Let's just save and publish and see what happens, see if it's gone. Okay, so I guess uh, you can't remove it. So in that case, um, we'll have to use it, I guess. Okay, so we might as well use it. Um, I'll give in, I can't get rid of it for now. Um, what I'm gonna, I've got a little doggy picture I'm gonna put there. So uh, let's go back to customize. And I'm just gonna link it through to the contact us for a bit of fun. So yeah, site identity, and then um, select the footer stamp. It's gonna upload a file. There he is. 53 by 66. So I'm going to link it through to the contact us. So and then click save and publish. If we refresh this. Ah, I see the problem, I'm using a retina screen, so that's why it's not showing up, so I need a retina logo, so let me just upload that. Okay, so again, to do that, we go to customize, and basically a retina logo or retina image is just one that's twice the resolution of the normal one, so let's just choose that, upload. And then click save and publish, and let's have a look. There he is. Perfect. Oh, look, there's some adverts appearing. So they're starting to come through. Pretty sure I chose um, image ads only, so I'm not quite sure what that's doing there. Um, but I'll adjust them in a second. So let me just wait for those to come through and then we'll, uh, we'll have a look at them. Okay, so the ads have appeared, took a few minutes, um, but they're here now, so there's that one there. There's these two here, so I think that's probably too many ads, to be fair. Um, I don't mind the one across the top, I suppose, but yeah, I don't want that one there. So let's go back into um, the settings for the ads, which are under WP Quads. And I think, yeah, we'll turn this one off here. And then click Save. Okay, that's looking good. So yeah, just got the one across the top and then got this one here. So um, that kind of comes to the end of the video. Obviously we can add some more widgets, whatever, which I will do. Um, just do that in the sidebar. So, you know, maybe we could add another ad there. That might look okay. Um, but yeah, basically I think we're done. So um, let's just add that final thing and just check uh, the pages one by one just to check they're all okay. So home. And then we should have a, um, where is it? Okay, it's not here, I know why, it's because we need to add our code to the widget area of the uh, ad settings again. So go back into WP Quads, go to the widgets code, and then I'm gonna go back into uh, AdSense, I'm gonna create a new ad unit. Let's call it Labrador Widget. Display ads only, saving it code. Copy the code into, oh, wrong tab, let me just close that tab, I've got too many tabs, sorry. Into uh, the widgets code area, the first one, add widget number one. Click save changes. Then now when we go into widgets, got this widget here, if I take that, Oh, not that one, that one, and put that. Oh, it's already there, no need to worry. So that's perfect, so if we go back to the uh, website, 
There's nothing there right now because obviously it needs to be approved by Google, but it will appear soon. So let's just have a look at one of the categories. I haven't got too much in that one. Click on one of the posts. There we go, we've got an ad at the bottom there, perfect. And again, obviously you can add some things here. So there's an RPIX widget I've just noticed that we haven't uh, filled out. So we can do that again in widgets and it'll be the single post uh, picks. And again, we just need to pick a category, which I think was featured, no tags. Save that, let's go back and have a look at a post. So there we go. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Uh, I hope your website has turned out okay. Uh, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you could click the like button and subscribe to my channel to get more videos all about WordPress and making websites and all that sort of thing. So until next time, I wish you the best of luck with your website and uh, I will see you soon. Bye for now.